Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk to you about using variables in the function stack. Uh, so variables are going to hold and store information and then you can um, reference those variables to use that information in other functions. So the vast majority of the functions in Xano, not all of them, but we'll probably say like, let's say 90%, um, will have some kind of output in the form of a variable that you can use in other functions. Okay, so if that doesn't make sense, let's do an example here and hopefully it'll start to uh, make a little sense. So here in this API endpoint, I'm just gonna add a new entry here. Let's do a database request. Let's get a record to the user table and let's just, I'll just hard code the value in for um, ID one there. So you can see that um, we're getting a record from the user and it's being returned as user underscore one. Uh, so that's the name of our variable. And we can even change that name. I can go to the output here. Maybe we'll just call it user. And I'll make sure that the response is returning um, that variable user. So for example, if I just go ahead and run this, we'll see here is user one, which looks like me. So we see all the information um, for user one. So that's now stored in this user variable. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and um, create a new variable as a function, if I go to create variable, and let's say that I wanted to call this uh, my name here, I can actually reference that user variable. I could go ahead and hit this drop down, find user, and use dot notation just to isolate the name um, of all that information that we got back. I could hit save. And now if I go ahead, um, let me just return my name here. And if I ran this, we would just get back Michael. Um, now, additionally, I didn't have to do that to get my name. I could have just returned uh, the user here instead of creating that variable and just typed in name. Um, but you get the picture. I'm just going to keep returning uh, my name for now. Uh, so additionally, sometimes we also are updating variables. Um, so for example, if I go to data manipulation and hit update variable, um, oftentimes I find when working in Xano, I'm updating a variable by itself to do some kind of um, filter on it. So for example, if I wanted to update my name, the existing variable by the value my name, I could apply some kind of filter to it. Um, let's say that I wanted to um, make my name all uppercase. I could apply this very, or this filter. And now if I return that, um, we can see that I'll have my name in all capitals there. So additionally, I could have applied that filter to this create variable or also this response, um, but you get the picture. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this update variable. One other thing that's very important here is that a variable has to be established already in the function stack for you to be able to reference it in another function. So for example, my name here is referencing that user variable. If I happen to move my name to uh, function one right here, well, look what happens when we click into it. It doesn't know that this user variable exists because this create variable, my name, is uh, being performed before uh, this one is being established. So once I go ahead and just drag it back down, we can see that uh, my name recognizes that user has been established uh, as the first function there, and we're able to reference it. We can also use variables um, to store information that we wanna add to our database. So if I do a database request, let's say I wanna add a record uh, to the user table. Here when I'm mapping these inputs, maybe I want the name to be something like my name. In the email, I could do something like user uh, dot email. We also have this great little uh, magic wand here that applies a single variable to all inputs. We can choose to have default values by checking this box here. Um, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like with default values because it looks a little different than dot notation. But let's say I wanted to apply my same user record. So I'd just be creating a duplicate record, which wouldn't be great. But um, as you can see, it applies that user variable it gets the path and it's getting the path based on um, the field here that you're naming. So in case you're getting a variable with different um, fields here, just make sure to map that up. You could go in, you could add default values here. Um, 
et cetera, et cetera. So um, I hope that's helpful. Um, you know, obviously variables are very important to understand when you're working in the function stack of Xano because it's how you're passing information and storing information from one thing uh, to the next and also manipulating all your data. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.